I was very young the first time I saw him. He sat on his horse. He had a large nose, deep-set blue eyes, and light hair that was long and wavy. Form the parade! They look grand. They do. In review. I admired him. All of the Cheyenne women talked of him as being a fine looking man. Bird! 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 My name on the agency roll is Kate Bighead. I was born when my people were in camp on the Geese River. I spent my childhood with the Southern Cheyenne. Through almost 40 years, many a time I thought of that handsome man I first saw in the South. We Cheyenne called him Hayetzi. Long hair. The Arikara called him Creeping Panther who comes in the night. The Crow called him Son of the Morning Star who attacks at dawn. I remember him. I saw him die. He was called Curly as a child. In his 14th year, he watched helpless as soldiers killed one of his relatives for taking a cow. In his misery and confusion, he had a vision. A warrior rode out of the lake. He seemed to float on the ground while riding his horse. The warrior carried no scalps. His unbound hair hung below his waist, and he wore a smooth brown pebble behind one ear. The warrior's body had been decorated with hail spots, and a streak of lightning ran from his forehead to his chin. Bullets and arrows attacked him, but fell away without touching. The storm broke, yet he passed through unharmed. His own people clutched at him, trying to pull him down. But he rode through them. A red-backed hawk flew above his head. The vision faded. That boy's name was changed to Crazy Horse. From that time on, he felt destined to protect his people from the white man. The white people had been moving west for years, building, cutting roads, pushing the Indians before them. By 1866, Barely an Indian nation in America was living on the land we was born to. The Indians did not intend to move further. Stinking savages! Stinking savages! Protect those sons of bitches! Hold up! Stinking savages! We're not supposed to
They called it the Fetterman Massacre. After the officer who swore that with 80 men he could wipe out the entire Sioux nation. It was no massacre. Them soldiers were stupid. And they rode to their deaths. News of the Fetterman Massacre was carried east. It was said that the heads were crumbled, brains were left to freeze on the rocks. Bitter feelings were awakened and the government was implored to punish the Indians. The order the army received was this. We must act with vindictive earnestness against the Sioux, even to their extermination. Men, women, and children. Colonel, give me a hand. General. Colonel Custer, sir. I am awake. Indian the war plains had Indian begun. war had begun. The war with the Indians for me would end ten years later. On that hill they call Custer's Last Stand. They call it Custer's Last Stand. But it was not his. It would be our last stand. They have fled. They are cowards. And you will pursue them, Colonel Custer. And are we pleased to have you finish and kill every last bloody red savage on these plains? Yes, General. Across the plains that summer. It was a new kind of war, fought in wide open, empty spaces against a complex enemy. Scattered. They scattered. Give me a civilized war, an enemy I can find and beat, an enemy who fights by the rules! We'll carry on. Sir, the men have done 30 miles today. They can do more. We were many nations, had many chiefs. And each warrior could make his own decision about when and who to fight. When we fought, we fought fiercely. When we fled, it was to avoid slaughter. We had been invaded. 